Welcome to this product demonstration video where I'll be terminating a Category 6A NCS style cable with a crimp style RJ45. My name is Ralph Parrott and I'm Liberty's Director of Quality and Technical Services and let's get going. First you want to make sure you have the right supplies. You can have a crimp tool for the connector, you have to have a jacket strip tool, you have to have a pair of diagonal cutters, preferably flush cutters, um, have a tweaker to help with the untwisting of the pairs and have your appropriate connector and your cable. So we'll go ahead and move some of these tools out of the way for now. One thing about this RJ45, it looks like a standard polycarbon RJ45, but this one is actually made for oversized insulations because all Cat 6A cables, UTP and shielded, will have a slightly thicker insulation and be bigger conductors. So this is a specialty connector for this. This is actually rated from Cat 5E all the way up through Cat 6A. I'm going to go ahead and cut my jacket off. I'm going to do about uh, one and a half to two inches. If you're going to use a boot, put it up the cable first. In this case, I'm not going to show that. I'm going to go ahead and Spin a few times on the minimum spin. Take my shield, find the seam, nip it and pull it off. Now here's the difference on an NCS cable. If you look, it's blue and it's blue. That means that both sides are polyester and not aluminum. So if you put a multimeter on here, you'd measure no continuity on either side. And that is a reason for that is data centers, they're looking to make their cable bundle smaller. They put this on there in order to basically prevent alien crosstalk across the different cables. Well, this has an added benefit for HD base T where you don't have to worry about ground loops if you use this cable because the shield's never, connect, never connected anywhere and it still gets rid of outside interference. It doesn't help that much with internal crosstalk, so it's not going to be as good as a fully shielded infrastructure, but it's better than UTP and it removes the ground loop issue, so it still works very nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and untwist my pairs. I need to get rid of my spline, and that's kind of the most important factor about using this type of cable with these polycarbon RG45s, is that spline causes this diameter to be pretty big. In order to make the entrance here smaller to fit into the back of the connector, I need to pull this, kind of stretch it, and then cut it off and let it kind of shrink back under the jacket. So I'll go ahead and give it a pull, and see how it's going back under the jacket there? So I'm going to give it a pull and just cut it off and then it disappears, it goes back under the jacket. So it's sliding back in there. So you can already feel it's, it's going back in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and untwist my pairs while that uh, spline is still retreating on me. And Tweaker makes this very easy, but you can do it many ways. You can do it by fingers, you can do it by using a piece of the jacket, for example. I'm gonna go ahead and just untwist my pairs, kind of gently separate them with the tweaker. Has an added benefit of one, untwisting them and also straightening them out. The brown and the orange are the ones that are lightly twisted, so they'll always be the faster, easier ones. So once you get all these straightened out, you'll notice the tweaker actually straightened out the twist too, so that's nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in the right color code. So I'm going to do 568B, which is probably the most popular one for any sort of data work. So once I have them all, I want to make sure they're nice and flat. I want this to be as flat as possible because this is not a feed-through RG45. It's a standard RG45. You're supposed to cut, leave about three-tenths of an inch or so of uh, the conductors facing out. So I've kind of got it. Make sure it's nice and flush across there. Take my connector, and while keeping the pressure on this, I'm going to go ahead and slide this in. And this is where that spline being out of there changes everything for you. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that in there, kind of make sure. Seat that fully. Now I want to look from the front of the connector here to make sure that everything's seated correctly. So if you can see copper across all lines there, then it did seat correctly. So I'm going to get a little bit more. All right. So everything's seated, so now I go ahead and crimp it. So with the RJ45 crimp tool, I'll seat the connector all the way. You want to make sure it's completely and totally seated all the way in, and there's an evil story around that. But uh, then you go ahead and crimp it, hold it for one one thousand, and then release it, and pull your connector out, and you've got a fully terminated Cat 6A NCS cable with a short RJ45 if you need to do a sharp bend or something like that. Say on the back of a, a wall plate or a box, gives you plenty of room. 
but it's fully terminated and ready to go.